I'm going to talk about uh, Polish Hasidic stories, uh, analysis of Hasidic stories in the work of Polish writer Stanisław Vincenz. Uh, I'm going to present a writer of a pure Polish descent, having no Jewish roots at all. Why have I chosen to speak about him on the conference around the point, the languages, literatures, and cultures of Jews? <coughs> so I've done it because, um, because the writer was strongly attached to Judaism, to the point um, that it should be discussed, that I'd like to discuss, the part of his creation shouldn't be considered a Jewish literature. However, before I will try to describe this literature, I will start from presenting shortly uh, this fascinating figure, as uh, I suppose most of the listeners here might not know him. Uh, Stanisław Vincenz was born in, uh, at the end of 19th century, uh, 1888. He was brought up in a family of intelligence and gentry uh, traditions. His father was an indus industrialist owning an oil business in Eastern Carpathians. Important place. Uh, it was there that Vincenz grew up uh, in Eastern Carpathians. At the beginning of 20th century, this land belonged to the uh, Austrian Empire and later from 1918 to Poland. During the Second World War, after entering Eastern Poland by Soviet army, uh, he escaped, illegally passed the border and never came back. After the war, he stayed on immigration, holding close to the Alps, a landscape that reminded him of his left behind little homeland. His death in uh, 1971 moved the literary world uh, both in Poland, which is meaningful as uh, during his lifetime, post-war lifetime, nothing of his works were, uh, were published in Poland, and abroad. Also, uh, also here in Israel appeared quite a lot of notes in the local uh, newspapers. This brief biographic outline is important uh, as the work of Vincent, especially his, his monumental tetralogy on the high uplands, is deeply attached to the region where the author grew up, the Eastern Carpathians, to beautiful and powerful nature landscapes of this area. This region was multinational, multicultural, and multi-religious. <coughs> it was this multi that interested and fascinated the writer most. He was into the culture of Hutsulians, the people, the locals, local people living in Eastern, Carp Eastern Carpathians, as well as into the Hasidic culture of the Jews, uh, culture of the Jews inhabiting his homeland. In the former, in Hutsulians, he would find the wisdom of experience of individuals struggling in harsh conditions, however always uh, inextricably <coughs> bound with nature. In the latter, in Hasidim, he would find the depth of mystical thought and ability to notice the sacred, sacred in deeds and objects that are routinely ignored and seemingly irrelevant. Now, to get you familiar a bit more with, uh, with, the, uh, with this main work of Vincent's, uh, <coughs> the title uh, On the High Uplands. Uh, it is uh, an epic cycle consisting of three parts, four thick volumes. Uh, the, author, the author considered On the High Uplands as the work of his life which he wrote and corrected nearly till his last days. Uh, tetralogy consists of 2,300 pages of text. The first volume of Tetralogy, <coughs> uh, as the only one, was published before the Second World War in 1936. All the rest had to wait until a uh, long time after the war, and Vincent saw actually the second part of the volume shortly before his death, as uh, almost nothing was published uh, during his lifetime. Uh, having not enough, not enough time for presenting the whole work, or at least <laughs> the tautology of Vincent's, I will say briefly that On the High Uplands may be read as a collection of stories evoking a lost world of the Polish, Jewish, and Hutu mixture found in Eastern Carpath Carpathians. It is also a collection of um, general thoughts on the modern civilization. On the one hand, on rights, freedom, progress, and enlightenment spread uh, by the civilization, and on the other hand, on its influence on ancient cultures, the pejorative influence. The work was largely inspired by Judaism, in particular by Hasidism, a, religi a religious and moral treaty on God, Satan, evil, love, and salvation. And he, it has become the focus of attention for scholars studying literature, religion, ethnography, anthropology, and even musicology. 
Um, you could say that in Poland now there is a club of, of uh, literal researchers dealing only with work of Vincent's. I haven't mentioned yet that he wrote a lot of uh, essays as well. So far, only a part of this work was introduced to the English-speaking uh, readers, and uh, translation of only the first volume again uh, from 1955. It was published in London, translated by students. Uh, I know also that there is transla translation, very, very fresh one uh, into Ukrainian, also only the first volume, and could be, I'm not 100% sure, to Hungarian. Uh, what about Jewish topics? Because that's what I'm going to, that's, that's our uh, topic. Vincent also touched upon Jewish issues in his numerous essays, which might be a subject of another extensive um, talk paper. Uh, nevertheless, the <coughs> Jewish world portrayed in, his, uh, in this monumental work, the Tetralogy, shall be more relevant uh, to this talk, and uh, that's what I'm going to focus on. The author made sure to give the Jews a special position in his text. The world of Baal Shem Tov's followers suddenly comes to life among plentiful dialogues and plots, unveiling as major storylines and flashbacks that sprinkle the text. It is Hasidic stories told in, this, uh, in his tetralogy that enrich his work so much. On one, uh, one must remember that stories of the tetralogy are set in the land where the religious movement was created. The map, for example, in close to the, one of the parts, uh, one of the volumes, overlaps with the southern part of the map depicting the centers of early Hasidism. There are such towns as Koamea, Kosuf, Kuti, little towns as Yabwonov, Pistin, or villages like Yashinovo, where nearby Baal Shem Tov supposedly had his secret cave. Uh, all those places are um, appearing all the time on the uh, pages of the work. The Hasidism in the Tetralogy emerges twofold as a folklore and mythological texts and anthropological and ethnographic texts. This is my division. The uh, fragments I call anthropological and ethnographic show um, uh, Vincent's portrayal of the Jews and their early, uh, everyday lives uh, contemporary, to, contemporary to the action uh, of, the, of the book. One must stress that depicting Jews in their own world culture and religion is rather rare in Polish literature. I mean, Polish, Polish. Um, I could m describe a bit more um, those everyday uh, Jews, but I think I will skip it. Maybe if we have time at the end, I will come back to it. Um, because what interests me, what I want to talk here about is the, those folklore and mythology texts of, on the uh, high uplands that uh, I would like to tell you more about. Um, they are Hasidic tales uh, appearing on the pages of the, of the, of the cycle uh, that the author composed on the basis of authentic sources. Um, and these are the texts I refer to in my title asking whether Vincent's created Jewish literature. Um, the author, basing on his own historical and religious knowledge, it was very, very well humanistically <laughs> educated, uh, on Hasidic stories heard in his homeland. Um, uh, as a child, I mean, there are beautiful the descriptions even in his essays, how he, uh, how amazed he was seeing uh, Hasidim <coughs> praying on Yom Kippur in the uh, synagogue. He was a child kind of climbing from the outside and trying to pop through the window. And uh, he was so amazed. There was this famous sentence he said, which was repeated over and over again by other researchers. How, how well must feel, um, I didn't write it down, uh, how well um, the people of, um, of the nation must feel knowing that such prayers are guarding them. He meant all the people around, I mean, not <coughs> only Jewish people. Um, so, basing on historical and religious knowledge, on Hasidic stories heard in his homeland, on translations of those stories from Yiddish and Hebrew to Polish, on childhood memories, on philosophical and theolo theological interpretations of those stories, and finally on contemporary to him studies on uh, Polish-Jewish relations and cultural connections, wrote his own versions of a few Hasidic legends, or even created them alone from scratch and placed them in Hasidic reality. Blending into the whole work these texts uh, become, uh, become its organic element and alongside other plots contribute to its general impact. 
Vincent wrote seven such stories. Um, they tell of a, I'll just uh, shortly to, to give you an idea. One is about Golem created in the Hutzel, Hutzul land. Another king learning that mere intellect is not capable of comprehending, comprehending the world. A story about the last one, I will talk about it in a moment, uh, about the best man on earth whose goodness and mercy salvages the world and who stands up even for the very Satan. There is also a tale of a modest tailor who was forcibly brought to Spain where Christians could not implement the commandment of loving their enemies, Jews having been banished. Mm -hmm. uh, further, <coughs> there is a tale of a young mystic looking for inspiration in the mountains and bringing people light. And finally, about God good, uh, God good, <laughs> redeeming Satan after the end of the world. Each of these stories, with its in-depth interpretation and uh, tracing the sources of Jewish inspirations, could become a separate topic of an extensive paper. Uh, speculating on this, whether Vincent should be regarded in some sense as a Jewish writer, I will simply, simply summarize one of them and will leave my question open for the discussion. Uh, I will talk about, I, I, will, um, I will summarize the story about the last one. That's what I chose. Um, all the stories are told in the, in the, in the work of Vincent. They, they are told by, by uh, in, in some situation of gathering and then Bumen uh, Bawagua, Balagala, one of the cart drivers, quotes a story of a man who had to be and become the last one. He would try various occupations. He was a water carrier, a cobbler, a tailor, a glazier. Nevertheless, none of these traits brought him satisfaction, as the last one would always worry too much. He was concerned about the poor, the hungry, and the unhappy. All this work made him the most patient human being, but also the last one. He could not keep any of his jobs because he was too zealous. For example, he would carry water from the purest, yet the furthest spring. To gullible, the people whom he trusted robbed him of his furs. Too polite, he would give way to people who, driving too fast, knocked him down and broke all his glass. Or too merciful, he would sew coats for freezing lamps and this way got rid of all his fabric, all his cloth. Having experienced all these hardships, the last one leaves the world of <laughs> wreck and uh, found his way in mysticism. He went far in the mountains where, <coughs> I'm citing here, a special material can be found to produ produce leather, cloth, and glass, end of quotation. And, the, and he took up meditation, maybe even magic. The last one was very humble and would never rush. He knew this band his boundaries and never overstepped them. He stopped at the right level in his mystic experience. At the same time, the whole gen generation of humans dazzled with fashion and rush towards the future gave way to Satan, all rushed straight to hell. Only the last one remained on earth. God himself praised him for, as he says, doing his best and not losing his bearing. <coughs> on the other hand, Satan wandered about last one's uh, perfection and decided to test him. He visited God, proposing that the last one should be tested just like Eop had been. A hilarious exchange between God and Satan fruited in an agreement giving Samuel the right to tempt the last one. I'm saying Satan, Samuel, because um, actually Vincent uses the word, uh, uses the name Samuel. Samuel. Uh, consequently, he offered to the last one learning at the Hasidic school of walking. At, the first, uh, at first, the last one followed Samuel's instructions, dashing forwards. However, he was quick to start running backwards, left and right. Satan's trick fa failed as the second generation rushed into hell, but the last one stayed on earth again. He lived in solitude for a long time until a fish, written in a big letter, until a fish descended to join him. Everything on earth, including the fish, became transparent, and the fish asked the last one to eat. Apparently, the tale concludes, or could conclude, or end here, and I will cite now uh, the part of Vincent's, my 
English translation. And the last one became transparent as well. It is when a man becomes transparent, he is capable of tasting Leviathan. Somebody must be the last one. A Hasid understands what he wants, but he's not overconfident and is often apprehensive. What he, Hasid thinks, maybe I just want to overtake someone. I might rush, I, I might rush with the wind to Gehenna. That's a laugh. Someone who is truly the last one shall not be fearful. No wind shall take him. And uh, de uh, devil shall not tempt him, shall not wipe him off his feet. He will simply lie on his back and watch Leviathan. And those were words of Vincent's, actually not of Vincent's, they were words of uh, Bauer Gua, uh, the um, Jewish car driver. As I said, story uh, ended here, but <coughs> as I mentioned earlier, they are always told in, the, in, the some, in some gathering, in, a, in, a, in some uh, social situation. So, however, a question one of the listeners ask, asks about the faith, fate, sorry, fate of the people who rushed straight into hell makes this story continue. A Semyuna student, um, a comer, future comer, uh, reminds that in Christianity everyone, including the sinners, shall be saved by a single redeemer. Jewish Balagulot uh, gave a reply mentioning the Chiba. I actually never came, came to the meaning of the word, I mean, where this word comes from, but they explain it, it's come back. It turns out that according to their stories, it is not only the sinners that shall be redeemed, but also Samael, who, owing uh, to the request of the last one, will be taken to heaven at the end of the world. Just like with other here, that, that was the end of the story. I mean, the end of my sum summary. Just like with other Vincent's stories, it is difficult to find a precise equivalent of his legend in Hasidic literature. I didn't find something which would match exactly. Nonetheless, this time, the story he presents is a <coughs> compilation of several texts or the fragments. Hence, we come across a mosaic of quotations. I'll just I'll just uh, tell you this, the sources where I, where I, uh, which I found uh, exact uh, matching. Let's say, Bible, your, your book from uh, Bible, at uh, least three stories of uh, Peretz, uh, of Martin Buber. I, I was referring to sources which were also not, which were known to Vincent. Yeah. Michal Yosef Bin Gorion Berdychevsky, uh, the Book of Zohar and uh, Luriani Kabbalah, which is, um, which is mentioned directly in, 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 the, in this particular story, where um, uh, Vincent says there, uh, uh, not Vincent, but uh, that's, what, that's how he writes or says, the great one from Safed, from Tzfat. Uh, he, it's, it's, um, he mentions uh, it's, uh, Isaac Luria. There are also motifs of tikkun, tzimtzum, shvirat kelim. Literally, the words are uh, in, uh, in those words are appearing there. Uh, and motif, also Lurianic motif of cooperation between God and the man in the process of redeeming uh, uh, the world. The story of the last one shows such a collaboration between God and the man in the process of salvation. The concept of showing the unity of the world is total in Vincent's corpus and truly has a lot in common with the Luriani Kabbalah whose overwhelming influence on Hasidism cannot be overestimated. According to its concepts, evil is an element of God, a side product in the process of creation. A man who is equipped with a guidebook of Torah overwhelms uh, with evil and prepares the world for the moment at which God himself shall deal the final blow. Identi identically, the eponymous, uh, the zealous hero of the story about the last one leads, <coughs> leads through the consequence in doing his duties and not yielding to urges, to the capitulation of Samael. Um, summarizing, uh, it is difficult to explicitly evaluate the authentic authenticity of Vincent's text uh, I, I talk uh, now generally, not only this one. It, in each one of them, the elements of Has Hasidic legends, but not only them, may be found. 
The stories of Vincent include numerous references to Kabbalah, especially to Luriani Kabbalah, which can hardly be, um, to the Bible, to Talmud, to Midrashis, Jewish, uh, to, to Midrashim. Uh, hence, Vincent creates a mosaic of sorts from Jewish motifs, a mosaic that is not accidental. It is rather a collage of elements that having their own inherent meanings form new ones when put together. They are both original and deeply rooted in the Jewish tradition. Author's fascination with mythology and archaic spirituality manifests itself in his broad interest, ranging from ancient mythology to the folklore of various regions or his contemporaries from different backgrounds. In this context, Jewish plots from his work on the High Uplands may, may make up an element of a larger concept of reaching the general subconsciousness. Vincent's religiosity was beyond any specific faith. Uh, so it was hardly a problem for him to move freely from ancient mythology through Christian medieval culture and Hutzul folklore to the Jewish tradition with its Hasidism. Accepting Novotinsky's um, and Polish researcher point that Vincent's work developed as a manifesto against technical civilization, I was pondering on the role of Jewish motifs in this manifesto. Vincent uh, proposes an alternative to the contemporary civilization, which gets lost in its rush. The alternative being a comeback to the roots, cherishing the tradition, <coughs> mythical attitude towards reality, folklore as an expression of uh, prehistoric truth. For Vincent, Judaism makes an important element of this alternative. A question remains whether Vincent became a creator of Jewish literature through penetrating Jewish topics, employing Hasidic texts, and referring to major works of the Kabbalah and Jewish mysticism. Did he turn to a tzaddik of sorts himself? Uh, Czesław Miłosz, a Polish poet, called him uh, Hasid in a Hutzulian fur coat. And, um, and that's actually the end of my, my talk, uh, which uh, I would like to end uh, with this question. As I'm coming from the world of Polish literature, and I, I'm, not, um, I'm not to judge. And I, I would be curious if there are maybe um, Vincent with, with, uh, with his creation and this deep, <coughs> deep trip into um, a penetration of, of Hasidut, of Judaism, is uh, very unique in Polish literature. I would be interested in there are maybe other writers, not of Jewish origin, in other languages. And and uh, how to how to refer to the to the creation and um, I think I think that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you.